Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about epistaxis, better known as nosebleed. There are different causes, which can be local or systemic. And to give you an overview, I want to go first through the local causes and then through the systemic causes. Local causes can be due to damage to the mucosa, like for example, a, a dry mucosa or when there's an acute inflammation or steroidal nose sprays, which make the mucosa thinner. Then it can be a trauma, like a digital trauma, a foreign body fractures, aneurysm, or also post-surgical trauma. And also neoplasms, no matter if they're benign or malignant, can cause epistaxis. They can be, for example, hemangiomas, juvenile angiofibromas, papillomas, melanomas, or nasopharyngeal carcinoma. The systemic causes can be, for example, blood coagulation disorders, like for example, therapy with anticoagulants, liver synthesis disorders, hemophilia A and B, anemia, leukemia, many others also. Then I want to talk about the site of epistaxis, so basically where the blood comes from. The most common area is the Kieselbach's plexus, also known as Little's area, and this is where 90% of cases originate from. This is located in the anterior inferior septum, and it's an area which is highly vascularized. There are usually four arteries which build the Little's area. This is the anterior etmoidal artery, the septal branch of the superior labial artery, the septal branch of the sphenopalatine artery, and the greater palatine artery. All those anastomose there, so this is why there can be excessive blood if one of these arteries ruptures. Also, there can be a posterior nosebleed or a superior nosebleed in different areas of the nose. Now I want to talk about the treatment. First of all, the first aid treatment, which you can also do at home. This is to position the patient in a sitting or upright position, which decreases the aspiration risk. Then to compress the alle of the nose for five minutes so that the bleeding, if it is in the little area, can stop. Also a cool pad in the nose, uh, in the neck, a cool pad in the neck can help to uh, reduce the bleeding by vasoconstriction or a xylometazoline nose spray, which is the normal common, common use no nose spray, which also leads to vasoconstriction. Then hospital treatment can include cauterization, nasal packaging, or local vasoconstrictors. Now I want to talk about a question when it's necessary to see a specialist. This is when the patient experiences frequent nosebleeds or severe nosebleeds with a increased blood loss, when a nosebleed is difficult to be stopped, or when there is diffuse nosebleed from multiple loci. I hope this was helpful with just a short overview about epistaxis and I would be very happy if you would subscribe. Thank you very much.